music over Australia, our in the lounge room guest is Lois. Welcome along. Thank you. Do you ever get tired of being recognised as the girl from the close-up commercial? Oh, it does get a bit tiring <laughs> after a while, but we're doing something to uh, change that. It's amazing. You walk into the building, everybody goes, oh, <laughs> you know that face. They see the bio or your resume. They go, oh, we know that face. That's right. That's I suppose right. that's been good for you as well. Oh, it's been great. I mean, I've gotten so much work from the ad. Um, if it wasn't for the close-up commercial, I don't think I would have done the miniseries and fe feature films that I have done. So. I mean, I owe a lot to Rexona. <laughs> <laughs> You've had an extensive career already, uh, film and television, more so uh, in this country than your singing, but uh, with all those opportunities and the glitz of working in America, glitz. Why, why, why move? <laughs> well, I, I love Australia. I just... I got so tired of, of Los Angeles. Um, I'm not afraid of competition by any means, but just some of the ways that you have to go about getting to the top um, which you know it's a bit of a worry I never had to lower myself to any of that which is why I'm in Australia the industry over here is fabulous they, they give you a chance and judge you by your talent not by what you look like or what you can do outside of the recording studio resumes always tell us the, of the formal training but there's a mm. lot of things that you've got to do when you go out and into the, oh, the world of, whether it be music or acting just to make a dollar or two that's right you must have some funny stories there. oh well I, I did singing telegrams in the states for about three years and i did them for quite a few celebrities but um probably the most memorable was eddie van halen's drummer um, Everything was going great. I was in a nice little French maid outfit and it was it was great until I handcuffed him and found out it was claustrophobic. I thought he was gonna kill me. <laughs> Gosh. What what other sort of work did you, you Um do? Well I, I sang with a big band for a couple of years and I sang with a country western band as well and um, studied opera for quite a few years and I toured Europe with the National Choir as a soloist so and I've done a lot of musical comedy as well so singing has always been my base that's where I've my first love but you have to t you have to go the way things take you as far as I mean I've been so lucky with commercials and general acting in Australia that you know you can't say no to no, De Niro. No. What, uh, <laughs> what led you to, to operatic training? Um, well <laughs> My parents found out that I could sing when I was about six, so they said, let's get this girl some lessons. And um, my voice teacher was operatically inclined, but um, I found it so depressing. I mean, every t nobody ever has a happy ending in an opera. I, you know, I, I want to have a laugh. I don't want to go home and, and cry and mourn for the week until we do the next production. Mm -hmm. So that's, but it's a good basis for any, I mean, I, I can, I've got a three and a half octave range and um, the song that we've done, It's In His Kiss, is a fun song. It's meant to have some fun and just to give you a little bit of a taste of what I can offer. Well, here's a different sort of music again. You talk big band, you talk country, and this is, is your basic dance floor pop song. Oh, it, it is. I mean, when we recorded it, I really, I felt like a horse with a bit in my mouth because <laughs> everything that the producer was asking me to do was things that my voice teacher said, don't do. So, right? oh yeah. So I, I, I really held back a lot in the single too, to get the sound. It's a fun song. It's a, it's, it's a song that people that are in their 30s and 40s will remember and they'll think back and think, oh wow, I remember when we used to do this and that to this song. And then the, new, the, the kids and teenagers will love it as well because it's boppy and fun to, you know, it's... A well-known well song. Oh yeah. Uh, as you say, singing is the first love. Is this your first venture into recording? Yes, it is. Mm, I, I had a few uh, bad experiences in the States um, with a few shonky record producers and it, I was young, I was only 21 or 22, so I, it scared me a little bit. Mm. And so that's why maybe I did go into the singing telegrams and I knew eventually I would get, it would just take a little bit longer. I mean, I've matured and I think, I think I have a better attitude to record now. And my voice is definitely better, I mean the older you get. Mm -hmm. Listen to mine. You should have heard mine at 21. Very sexy. It wasn't like this. I it down. You've had some interesting other things that you've, you've done through life, too. I mean, if, if we pick up the resume, there's even a bit of radio background there in America. Yes, I was. I spun a few of the old lacquer things myself. <laughs> I, um, I worked as a DJ and program director at the college radio station. And uh, I did a couple Los Angeles local stations as well, playing. I did the 9 to midnight, you know. Come to bed with Lois and I'll play whatever you want. 
<laughs> that type of thing. Um, but it, it was it was successful, and I enjoyed it. But um, I. Uh, the, the thing I enjoyed about radio, I think, was that the fact that you could come in to the studio and do your show, and it didn't matter at all what you looked like for exactly. the day. But it's I, a very important thing in my book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I think the fact that you don't get—I mean, I do love working in front of the camera. I have to be honest. I, I really thrive on it, and I miss that in the radio but it's good to have that background I mean it's good anything that you do in life I think eventually is going to come together in the whole circle of things mm -hmm. as you say I mean this career had expanded uh, extended through quite a number of years before you've recorded mm. that must have been strange with a new experience again. oh it was it was great I mean I've, I've done two I did two demos in the States but they were only on an 8 track and a 16 track studio and you can't really get the full effect when I was so surprised when I heard the mix. I thought, gee, it sounds so professional, you know. Uh, well, what do you expect it to sound like, Lois? You know, and I, th I felt like a, like a new kid on the block. But um, no, it's a great experience. I really love it because you can get so many different different sounds and so so many different just vocally. I mean, I, I've been able to to sing different styles, as you've said before. But when we when you go into the studio, you can just play around and, and hear, you know, listen back. And the single is actually all four tracks, voice tracks are done by myself. And there's no producing it all on my voice, so it's all me. Right. The album you've mentioned, is that on the way? Well, or are what you still to record? Well, we're going to do a couple. We've got a single in the pipeline at the moment. And we'd like to record three or four singles and then get an album. Because it's always nice to buy an album and like four or five on the songs mm -hmm. and just instead of just one. Who's choosing the material for that? Well, uh, myself and Kent Pickering, who is my executive producer. He's actually the owner of Lead On Records, which is the label that I am on. Mm -hmm. well, all the best of success. Thank you. It's in his kiss. Thanks, Trevor. Our guest, Lois, of Music Over Australia. <laughs> 